right, cars are on the line and ready for the next one. Simon Olofsson, Morton Askland, Jesse Callio, Yami Kaliamaki, and Linus Ostland. So Linus on the outside, his dad runs this circuit. He said to me yesterday, he said, oh, I don't talk about the laps I do when the track's shut. So he should expect Ostland to go well. But in the middle of the grid is Jesse Callio. Callio's got a reasonable start. There's going to go deep on the brakes, try and go around the outside, ends up in the dirt. Oh, So rear Callio, tire's gone. Yeah, rear tire there. So it looks like he just came off the jump with a puncture and it just pitched him around. Nothing to, for him to gain the, the, the grip after you come off of that slight right jump. I was going to ask you about turn one and the fact that he went sideways over the back of a curb and that is just not what you want to do. You know, if you go sideways over the back of a curb, the, the back of it's kind of flat, isn't it? The front of it, and this is what we saw with Oli Erickson when he hooked the wheel too much here. And they're all, they're all very close to it. But if you do it, you risk pulling the tire clean off the rim. So deep over the curb, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's maybe even some damage to the bottom of the car because it's that much of a step on the other side. As we can see, from the background, background. They're still going around. Um, but he he would have dragged so much dust. You can see there all the guys there going slightly wide, and uh, where he went wide, he would have dragged all the gravel onto the track, so may, making the lap time slower. Olofsson getting past Askland over the jump. Ostland just behind them. These three having an absolute ding dong of a battle. Kaliamaki out front. Just for this weekend, I can't remember. So many drivers that I've been reading about this week. So we got such a big entry. Kaliamaki leads, but Olufsen's only 1.3 back. What do we think the Joker is here? Can you remember? Uh, I think for supercars, it's roughly uh, three seconds. But uh, I know that with the RX2 cars, the Joker lap is the difference is a bit less because they're able to rotate the cars faster through the chicane than the supercars. That's mad, isn't it? So it's often the other way round, particularly if it's somewhere like Estering where there's a, a power run out of the Joker uphill. But um, there we go. You can see the tarmac that's now appearing out of the loose. They dragged the loose all over that section of the road. There was always a run of tarmac on the inside. Oliver Erickson was saying to me, no, Kevin Erickson was saying to me yesterday, there used to be tarmac on the inside. They dragged the gravel over it, but it's now been loosened off. So you've now got tar on the inside, gravel on the outside, a big step off it. Kaliamaki hoping he's got enough. He's got the gap up to 1.7, so maybe that's going to be enough there. Yeah, I mean, I think these guys are probably going to need roughly 2.5. We, we'll see the gap across the line as, uh, as Kalimak is going to have to go. So we've got 1.8 for him now. We'll see what the gap is when he, he comes out of the Joker lap. Oh, he's two sideways in, clips one of the markers, might get a wall. He's certainly not going to get the extra speed he was hoping for. He's going to get taken by one, maybe two. Does he lose another position? Contact at the merge. Askland goes round Ostland in the side. That might get investigated, to be fair, because Kaliamaki, in theory, has to give way to the standard lap. You know, if you turn across on Dan, they'll probably judge that by what, how far up the inside he was. Yeah, I mean, they were sort of side by side, and for me, I think Kaliamaki there was maybe a bit too aggressive trying to cut across the front. So stewards might look into that, we'll let you know if they do. Olofsson is going to take this. Olofsson, at the minute, is in P7 in the standings, but what's really of interest to us is where is Calio? So once these guys across the line, we'll try and find him. He's up heading towards the velodrome now is Calio. And Calio is P2 in the championship. Jesse Calio, he's a fair number of points back already. He's got a rear left puncture, which he's had from turn one. And Danny's managed it really well. And I mean, managed the damage from the look of the car. Yeah, and it's really important for him to carry on. We've already had two DNFs uh, from RX2. So for him to carry on to get to the finish, it already bumps him up. A couple, of a couple of places to to the guys that are retired. So Jesse Callio this year has qualified third. He got the TQ in Belgium, qualified second in the UK, qualified fourth in Norway. But we said with a big entry like we've got here in Sweden, it can be absolutely crucial for your championship hopes. Jesse Callio is going to drop to the bottom of the table here. Simon Olofsson is, uh, I don't know where he's going to slot in. Let's have a look. They're all off. So that that was not a fast race, and that's thanks to uh, all the all the racing that was going on in it. But, you know, they're racing the clock. Good mix of nationalities at the top. Look, we've got a Swede followed by a Jamaican, a Swede, and a couple of Norwegians. So we're going to see a fantastic battle. But someone who might not feature is Calio. He's going to have to do a brilliant job for the rest of qualifying to make it through to the semis. Oh, yeah,
Simon, that was a very busy race, but you came out on top. Talk us through it. Uh, I did a uh, really, really bad start. We got to uh, fight a little bit to get uh, up. Oh. We took a win, so we're happy with that. I can see that you're pumped. Yeah, always. In hurries. <laughs>